First of all, if you're watching this lesson right now, it might mean that you're a bit under the weather and not feeling like your usual self. Knowing that, I'm wishing you a speedy recovery to get well soon. So in English, we use the expression, this too shall pass, as a reminder that the difficult and uncomfortable moments in our life are temporary, even though they might not feel that way in the moment. So keep that in mind. Communicating with doctors and nurses can be very challenging. This is particularly true if we're in such pain and discomfort that we can barely express ourselves. And what can pose an extra challenge is if English is your second or third or fourth language and they never went over a visit to the doctor's office in your English textbooks or your English classes. All right, well, first of all, don't worry because I've got you covered. And today I'm teaching you how to communicate to doctors and nurses and medical practitioners in a way that is stress-free so that you can focus on the real reasons you're at the doctor's office in the first place. Let's get started. On a scale from one to 10, one of the best ways to describe how you're feeling is if you use a scale. This is very helpful for the doctor to understand your pain levels and your general feeling of ease or dis-ease. So on a scale from one to 10, with one being uh, feeling absolutely the worst and 10 being I feel amazing, I'm 100% today. Describe where you fall on that scale at that given moment. So you can even say on a scale from one to 10, I'm at an eight. Or you might say, I'm at a zero right now, which is why I came in today. Two, describe your symptoms. Next, it would be wise to describe your symptoms and how long you've been experiencing them. So here's an example. My throat has been raw and itchy since Sunday, and I've had a runny nose and nasal congestion for the last three days. I've been sneezing since Monday, and the last two days I've been experiencing elevated temperatures and a fever. It feels like my symptoms are getting worse. Okay, so that's an example. Try to be as specific with the progression of your symptoms and how long you've been feeling them because that'll be great for the doctor to really understand what's been ailing you. It would also be a good idea to jot down how you're feeling the moment any new symptom surfaces so that you can be better informed as to how you explain and describe your symptoms to the doctor or to the nurse. Just try not to read too much into all the aches and pains. Track your symptoms and how they progress, and then bring those data points to the doctor so that they can use that for their analysis. You can use present perfect continuous for the symptoms that are still present. So has, have, plus been, plus the ing form of the verb, because you are still experiencing those symptoms when you talk to the doctor. Three, getting a second opinion. So for things like a cold or a stomach bug or a slight fever, you probably don't need this. However, if it's more complicated, then it might warrant a second opinion, meaning another doctor or medical professional would weigh in on the situation. You could say that you will be getting a second opinion if they nudge you in the direction of surgery or something invasive, which you are not looking to do at the moment, if it's not necessary. Or if they don't mention any type of treatment plan, then you might just ask the doctor for a referral so that you can get a second opinion. So as you're going through the steps one through three, remember to be as clear as possible. Speak slowly to articulate each word and sentence 
and take time to express yourself. Now, it's understandable that you might be nervous. You might be a little bit afraid because of what's going on and that it's completely natural. In fact, you're not alone with that. And not a lot of people like interfacing with doctors, particularly when you might not be feeling great and you're a little bit worried about what's going on. And that's totally understandable. But when you're trying to communicate what's wrong and what's bothering you, it's really a good idea to slow it down and to try to calm your mind and get your headspace under control so that you're more effectively able to share what's bothering you. Because ultimately, they're there to help you. So look at it as an opportunity to get help that will really enable you to feel better in a shorter time frame than if you were just to ignore it completely, right? And if you need to have your notes handy either on a piece of paper or on your phone, it's absolutely totally fine to come to the doctor's office with your notes in hand. That way it shows that you're really prepared about what you want to talk about and they'll be impressed. Practice these strategies, make them your own, and over time you'll notice that these strategies will become much more automatic the more practice you have. Okay, so now let's summarize. When you're going to the doctor's office and you're having an issue, you want to describe the pain that you're experiencing on a scale from one to 10. Then you'll describe your symptoms and how long you've been experiencing them to the best of your ability. And then be sure to use the present perfect continuous tense for the still persistent symptoms because that lets the doctor know that it started on that date and is still continuing now at the time that you're at their office. Most importantly, get plenty of rest, proper nutrition, enough hydration, and get well soon. I'm sending you healing vibes. All right, advanced English learners, thank you so much for joining me for this lesson. Have you communicated in English with doctors and nurses before? How did that experience go for you? Feel free to share that with us in the comments down below. All right, I will see you in the next one where we're gonna continue advancing your English together. Until then, keep up the awesome work and I will see you soon.